Hey, what is up fam? It is Peyton here and today what I want to do is I want to kind of go through the whole process of what I do in terms of finding a gaming project and this is just going to be a live uh, forum so if you guys want to type in questions feel free to do so uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from scratch. I have not looked at anything that I'm about to do right now. We're going to go through all the tools that I use um, and then go through kind of a vetting process in which that our Discord uses and then uh, we'll go into if we have the time which you know we might have the time we'll just start doing the report and kind of the questions and how I do my investigations on finding alpha before everybody else and seeing if this project is actually up to scuff, okay? So hopefully with some luck, we'll find a good project to kind of talk about and we can uh, get this started. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, where I start, I actually don't really start at in.hootweet anymore, um, mostly uh, because like uh, the influencers are not the like source of information, right? So like, well, they are a good source of information, either that they like they find things uh, a little bit later uh, than some of the other tools that I've found. And so we'll go through like one, we'll go through Becker real quick and see if there's anything new that pops up. Um, I don't really think so. Uh, In.hootui takes a long time, so I might move on uh, while that's loading. Uh, we'll go into Crunchbase. Crunchbase is probably one of my favorite tools in the uh, toolbox right now, especially for the Cyberwolves, but also just for me as well. In Crunchbase, what you do is you actually uh, get to look up uh, specific uh, venture capital or just like any business in general and kind of see the ties. And so for me, right, uh, there is a, uh, a game that you would probably like is Sandbox and Animoco Brands uh, invests in that. So what we can do is we can look up the VC that Animaco uh, Brands is, we can look up the investigation or investments that they've done and they it seems like they've been uh, investing into a couple of things here. Uh, Solus, uh, it's not the first time I've heard of Solus. Uh, Solus is virtual reality and cross-platform PC game inspired by Decentraland and Sandbox. All right, so here's something that we can uh, possibly look into. So $4.3 million in funding, that's not bad. Uh, 24 investors um, and Elio actually said something uh, good in today's uh, video is that like there's there's a lot of VCs now that are just throwing out money so this shouldn't be like oh my gosh this is amazing that's raised 4.3 million dollars that's not what you should probably look at okay so what you should do is see okay there's a total amount of funding of 4.3 million dollars for one game for 24 investors and so now you can kind of compare like this is the seed round right so this is the beginning of the seed round uh, let's see uh, the sandbox if we can even pull that up I don't know if it's, it will be saved, my man. Uh, so you don't have to stick around if you don't need to. I value your time, so you need to get going. Uh, it will be under the live periods. Okay, so anyways, we'll just go into the investors, right? So there's 24 investors that um, has have did $4.3 million in funding. And these VCs now are sitting on a lot of cash because of the big run up in blockchain gaming. So right now they're not really looking at the fundamentals or valuations because they have a lot of money to blow, right? Me and you, the common person, that's not gonna happen. There's gonna be a certain amount of uh, uh, caution that we have to do in terms of investing the money that we've we worked pretty hard with, right? So 4.3 million divided by 24 investors, which are my, yeah, 24 investors. On average, that's, um, it's $179,000, which is not much, right? So it seems like this one's just kind of throwing a dart uh, and seeing if it lands. Uh, but let's still, that's still like, that doesn't mean that we discredit the game and we just write it off completely, right? If they're trying to be something like Decentraland and Sandbox, that's that's gonna be something that we wanna look after. Okay, welcome to the Solace Metaverse, the first cross-platform VR Metaverse on the Solana blockchain. Okay, so that's something going for them. They're going on Solana, which I don't think that there's a Sandbox uh, completely on Solana just yet. So you can play, explore the metaverse owned and built by users. Uh, and before I do this, let's back up here. Like it, it is a pretty good looking game, right? Like a not a game, it's a good it's a good looking website. So that does show that there's some care that gets uh, put into it um, and that they're uh, maybe doing it. So next I'll go through the website and then we can go into, uh, I do not want to even touch this button because it's Telegram, uh, which is just a wild house. Uh, but anyways, uh, okay, so you can play, you can explore the metaverse owned and built by users in an immersive way through virtual reality, okay. Um, and one thing that's um, the thing for me is that like virtual reality is like a niche, right? Uh, you have to be very careful within like the total addressable market and the serviceable addressable market and or the service attainable market. So there's a total addressable market. And I think this would actually be a really good 
uh, illustration to map out. Um, I was explaining to one of my friends, uh, ZK Rollups. Uh, give me a second. All right, uh, we could just use this. All right, and also ZK Rollups seems like there's going to be a pretty big narrative for ZK Rollups and Solana. So I think both of them will probably be in there. Okay, so when it comes to uh, the uh, total addressable market, uh, serviceable attainable market, and I don't want to give you guys bad gouge. Give me a second. Let me make sure that I'm not mixing up uh, the serviceable attainable market and the uh, uh, total. Here, we'll just look it up together. The service attainable market is the TAM, uh, SAM, and SOM. Okay, yeah, there's already graphics, so I should have just done that. Okay. So the total addressable market here, oh, it's probably gonna drop an ad in front of me here so a second. But here's the, the TAM, SAM, and SOM, right? The total addressable market is the, the total market for your product, right? So like VR is a total uh, addressable market, you have to look at that, okay? And the service obtainable market is like within like what you're creating, like for example, like Solus, it's the total addressable market is like VR, right? So VR is huge, right? But SAM, the service adjustable market, is smaller than that. It's VR uh, within a sandbox. And then underneath that, uh, SOM, um, you have to also go into the serviceable attainable. What can you do and obtain within uh, that SAM? So that's very important, right? So uh, that, that's a big deal. Okay, so now going into Solace again. So that's, that's what they're playing. So you also have to understand VR is like, it seems like it's been coming for a long time. So you just have to be cautious about that. Uh, trade, buy and sell assets on the Solus marketplace. A lot of these are having marketplaces and they earn like specific uh, types of um, uh, probably soul or whatever in-game currency that they're doing. They earn by clearing, uh, clearing, clearing dungeons. By clearing, clearing dungeons. I think that's a typo. Mini games and quests or receiving entrance fees for your own cre uh, creation users. So very similar uh, to a lot of other sandboxes. You can either um, do an, I guess an in-game thing that Solus is making is like dungeons and mini games. That you can earn like a, a type of like token um, create solace will be introducing a customized editor that offers users a, a convenient way to create assemble shared 3d models so this is like seems like a decentraland so this is going to be primary a let's see if they developers right this is probably something that you should probably track um, and i think this is actually a one of our discord members wrote a report on that if i remember solace um, and virtual reality, explore, lands, yeah, all this good stuff, um, right? So I, I'll, we'll put that on the, the waiting list. We'll put that over here, um, just in case I need to explain that later, I'll do that again. All right, so that one didn't work. We'll just refresh that. In.Hutu is like super slow. Okay, let's see what else uh, Animoco Brands has been up to. See Link Buy. Let's put like Link Buy is Link Buy is a Taiwan based social commerce platform. I'll pass on that one. Tailwind. Tailwind is a professional UK game studio focused on creating incredible experiences for the metaverse. Let's see that. Five point three million dollars in funding with eight investors. Right now you're seeing the comparison. Right, the quality of eight investors putting up uh, five point three million. That's quite a uh, a good ratio, right? Um, something that like also showed me like why crypto unicorns um, was going to be good was because the ratio to investors versus like that's each investor giving one million dollars on average, right? One of them might have been a little bit more uh, weighted, but that shows like there's a confidence within the team and also that somebody's willing to pay that much money up front, even if it's like you know a million dollars. Like we just saw in Solus, that was possibly a on average, 175,000 uh, for uh, that. So, you know, does it show confidence that the VCs are willing to back that? Even in the bull market that we're in, like they have all this money and they're only going to throw 175,000. That is a red flag, but not saying that Solus, it, it seemed like pretty clean, right? So we'll see. Uh, Tailwind, Tailwind Professional UK Game Studio focused on creating incredible experiences for the metaverse. Okay, let's see who their investors are too. So other than Animoco Brands, um, Sequoia, Capital close on okay. One up ventures, FJ Labs. Okay, I'm the only one that I really um, 
uh, raises my eyebrows at Animoco and Sequoia. Sequoia is a relatively new one, so that's that's very very cool to see. All right, let's go to Tailwind. And then we can go to another VC after this. Let's see, Animoco is not the only one that's on the block. Breathing adventure into the metaverse. Tailwind's a new professional UK studio working in Roblox. Press metaverse with games that are fresh and fun and full of adventure. Okay. Why Animoco Brands? All right now, this is like Sketch, right? So there are like some like websites that, especially when you find things this early, like you kind of are like, why did Animoco invest in you, right? They say Roblox all over their website, but are they going to see if this guy has any? Oh no, this is what they're looking for. Here's another hack. Let's see if there's a. Oh, maybe not. It's not going to show because they have already ones. I would like to see if like they hired anybody in the past for like blockchain development or like a technical person that understands like blockchain. Um, let's see here. Dang. I want to see like, you know, in their in their report too, like, oh, you know, development of like blockchain or integrating with blockchain doesn't seem like that they're doing that though so this could be a mask maybe something that we can also track but not for now uh okay let's move on to uh let's see let's actually let's finish up animico and see what else they invested in recently mm. uh sorry i wasn't checking chat okay uh do you have a discord i can follow um we do have a discord but right now we're going through actually a pretty big purge. There's around 500 people in the Discord. We're cutting it down to like 150, 100 personnel. Um, and like for us, it's the, um, we're just gonna be running with a few people. Uh, it's kind of what it is. You can fill out a uh, form and I'll, I'll put the form down in the comments below after this video is up. Um, but we're only accepting a few people uh, just because the synergy that we're having right now, we find a lot of projects and we do a lot of reports and we give a lot of alpha. Um, so we kind of now are going to uh, blockade that just a little bit. There's no payment. There's no nothing. We're not asking for anything. We're just trying to work uh, with a little bit of peace and less noise. Uh, but you can fill out a form uh, for it if you want to. Um, okay, Metamundo. Metamundo is also something that our Discord has been, I think, touching on. Yeah, you guys have been killing it. I, I'm, I'm a little late right now because I, I do... Uh, some other things and like the discord I, I recognize those names I didn't know that they came from Animoco okay let's go to hashed hashed is somebody also like let's see here okay seed round so that means that they're pretty convicted on it uh, lead investor uh, is a decentralized social platform where people can get off limitations of physical world all these like you know uh, oh diesel social platform okay let's see if they do it you know we're not against it. 3.5 million with six investors. Pretty good. Pretty good amount. Let's see who other investors are. Coinbase Ventures, Bitcraft. Oh, bro, let's go. <laughs> oh, let's go. All right, this must be at least like somewhat clean. It's only one to 10 uh, people too in the team. So it's a very small team. Give life to your NFT avatars with, should we do it guys? Should we do it? Smash that like button, dog. <laughs> All right, let's see what, all right, I'm vibing. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Definitely need it. Especially, like, you know, you have a target audience that has a crap ton of money. Guess what? They're going to probably pay for these little things. Oh, this is fun. Let's get early access. Because we early. Be your crypto punk with... Ah, oh, with a small group of crypto. Should I just buy one so I can be a part of this? 
<laughs> Just kidding, guys. All right, let's join this Discord, though. Okay. Uh, if you're not in Discord and you're trying to get alpha, you ain't going to get it. I got to verify. Everyone check the rules first. All right, I'm in. Okay, I'll check this out later. Uh, is it possible that individual funds new startups, i.e. DeFi uh, driven? Like, absolutely. Um, they definitely can be. Um, yeah, it like VCs and everything like that, they're not needed for a successful project. The one thing about like uh, the community uh, driven like ones is it becomes a how do I say it? So like some of the NFT projects that are currently happening, like they raise funding by uh, raise money by selling the uh, NFTs. Um, so you just have to be careful about like the team behind it. Like as long as the team is like pretty solid and they're raising money, like you can do that. Like for Citus, for example, uh, like Citus didn't have VC funding, right? We we got in at Mint is like 0 0.055, and like that's that's the big thing is like hey if you get in there and you look check behind the nft and see that like oh there's some good solid people uh that are doing that or like you know uh that are getting uh like a solid project and that they're going to be working towards a game uh that's going to be that's going to be really good um uh okay i need to make sure that i don't lose this one can i say sorry to <laughs> I don't want to say sorry to Ninja Mint again. I will make it in a notepad for you, Ninja Mint. I'll, I'll just put it in my Word doc. There you go, Ninja Mint. All right. I won't, I won't ruin Ninja Mint's uh, Excel spreadsheet. My boy. Okay. Oh. Ooh, somebody's been watching Benjamin Cowan. All right. So let's see here. Following. So people that are not familiar with uh, in.hootweet, in.hootweet is a, like, uh, um, it puts in chronological order of the people following on Twitter. Somebody, like, messaged me the other day of, like, Twitter puts it in, like, chronological order now, or, like, you have the option to. I still haven't found that yet. I'm a smooth brain in that sense. I don't know um, what that is, but that also is still loading, so we'll wait for that one. All right, moving on to other things that hashed his... Uh, invested in yeah avocado guild i'm pretty sure this one's like a nft based play to earn blockchain gaming company so a lot of these guilds are now are coming out um that could be a narrative but i think they're going to be too late so like the one thing about like the uh, narrative that's currently happening is gaming and the metaverse right but like the the metaverse uh, and gaming could go on for another like couple weeks but it could also die and so we'll see we'll see what happens we had 18 million though for eight investors that's quite a bit um, so you got Binance, a lot of capital, Animico, Polygon Studios, Hashed. So it seems like this guild is like some 11 to 50 pe people, Series A funding. What is this? What is this stat? Avocado Guild. Okay, so like they're probably getting into other duns. Okay. Are you a Voyager in JRNY chat? No, I'm not. J JRNY, that's Journey, right? I know some Journey. I'll sing it for you guys later. No, JRNY is the real deal, man. I like him a lot. Um, but I am not that. I don't know what that is. If you could tell me what that is, that's cool. Um, okay, November 16th, so that's a little late. Um, okay, let's see, let's see. Who else do I like? I'm still kind of freaking out about that uh, that social media one that you can animate your NFTs. That was cool. Give me a second. I'm gonna try to. You guys can look at me for a second while I log in. Dum dum dum. Okay. What? All right, games. Oh, wait. Okay, it's his recent NFT launch, 
to be in his group for early NFT projects he partners with. With it's kind of cool. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. I think I think Jeremiah Crypto is awesome. Uh, journey. The one question to ask though, in all this, is like you know what happens to the Doge Pound after like you know Becker and Elio left like Cyber Kongs. Not Cyber, they didn't leave, but like you know what I mean. Like they're creating their own stuff. They're not gonna pitch like Cyber Kongs as much or like you know. Journey Crypto is not going to pitch like Doge Pound now that he has his own NFT. Like, I'm just curious on like what happens to the Doge Pound and everything like that after this is. I'd love to hear you guys' comments. Like, I know like Doge Pound is like uh, seen to be like a blue chip, but that's something to to ask ourselves. It's like you know, the the age of these influencers that are like you know pretty much moving markets. Um. Okay. Do I like? I need to. Oh, sorry. I think I still see myself. All right, let's see here. Let's go to the sheet. Oh, dang it, it's on my Google Google Chrome. Or I'll go to our Discord real quick. All right, thank you, Buzz. No, it just opens up in Chrome anyways. All right, all right. Okay. Oh, jeez, this is my crypto portfolio. Sorry, guys. Um, sheets. There you go. Official gaming crypto. Um, let's see here. Wasn't on purpose, I promise. And okay, Dow Maker, No, these are not the people that I want. Mm, this is not the updated one. Ah, here it is. Maybe it is. Okay, GD10 Ventures. Let's see what they're up to. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. GD10. Alrighty. Uh, GD10 doesn't really open up their stuff. Gaia Everworld. I wonder whatever happened to that. Let's see here. Cypher. He was invested in Cypher and reverse engineer. 6.8 million, 21 hashed. Now AU21 as well does some stuff. All right, let's see what AU21 has been doing. Harmony Launcher. Pretty sure it's just Kibo Finance, Real Realm. Are all pretty old. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Dang it. Can't go anymore down there. Convoy Ventures. Never heard of these guys. Micro VC. They invested in Sky Mavis back in uh, May 11, 2021. Good for them. Software development specialized in edge computing. GenoFence. There's a lot of investors for GenoFence. Let's see. Convoy, DeFi Alliance. Let's see what else Solana Capital is investing in. know too much about Solana. Does Monkey Ball have one? Okay. Dang, freaking 27 investors with only $3 million in funding. That's kind of crazy. They have a lot more though. Morningstar Ventures. I know they've been investing in some stuff lately. Huh. 
CK link. Hmm. We'll go to um, October. Twitter, BC team. It's all the stuff that you guys found. Okay. We can go to Bitcraft. Bitcraft is also somebody that's doing some good work. Bitcraft. Okay. Nikki Panda, I'm still like very, very confused on what this is. is. Sneaky Panda hasn't anything yet. Coming soon. Let's see if they mess. Let's see if they messed up. Tezos. Um, let's see if they messed up. What is it called? Historic website. I don't know what it's called. It's like oh, it's a time machine. Yeah, way back machine. There we go. Google's so good, man. Did you check out Big Time um, New Game? Yeah, Big Time's awesome, man. Uh, the funding and stuff like that is also crazy. Um, just absolutely nutso team. Um, yeah, we could uh, we could go through that, man. Uh, I probably want to write a report with for Big Time later on, anyways. Dang it, they didn't mess up. So sometimes let's save two times though. Let's see, let's see what where else it was saved. So 2021, 18 April. When was the other one saved? Two snapshots. Please try our newest game. I'll, I'll try. So this is something that you can kind of use as a hack. It's like this thing called Wayback Machine. And you can see like what people put on before <laughs> um, they change their website. Yeah, so. Dang it. Craft. Okay. Dang it. Come on. Dang it. Thought I had him. Okay. Go to craft the best slot machine you can. Sneaky Panda. Huh. Uh, you said uh, you use Wayback Machine from Ordinary Gamer and never knew you could do that until this video. Yeah. It's freaking sick, man. It's awesome. Um, okay, so Sneaky Panda. It might be like a spin royale game. But the thing is too, is like, what do you even do with that information at this stage of the game? Okay, 
Wonder Hero. Wonder Hero is an NFT play to earn mobile game. The game is a turn based RPG. Oh, I didn't have it. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Thank you, Neo Tokyo. Anime inspired. Okay, this one looks familiar. This reminds me of Mega Man. Has ever played that? Like a Mega Man one that like you plug into the. Oh, a little uh, advanced uh, war fighting, advanced tactics. Pass over that DS, turn by turn. Oh. This one looks sticky. This one looks sticky for sure. What I mean by sticky is just. Uh, yeah, people will play it like, and they're gonna spend like a lot of money, and based on the market cap that it launches with, win token, governance token, play to earn token is Han NFT marketplace. Yep, yep, yep. So announce partnership, open beta test in December, complete alpha test, first NFT wonder box sale. Did we miss it? Get wind, W N D. Let's see, Let's see what the market cap is right now on it. WND. Um, okay, so we don't know what circulating supply is, but it's four dollars and ninety three cents. Total supply is a hundred million and is that true yeah so 1.5 so public sales 1.5 50 percent token generation event 25 percent unlocked monthly for which one oh for the sale okay wonder hero Four dollars and ninety-three cents. Did Becker mention this one recently? Turns I don't remember him mentioning it. Yeah. Four to ninety-three million market cap. It's a lot for twenty-nine million. If it's sitting at four point nine three. For fully diluted 100,000 or 100 million. He has, okay. He has touched it briefly. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Um, GCR, Monster Hunter, Lindsay Hodges, Joe Rogan. Yeah, Sin City looks really good too. Overtime Gaming, official account for Overtime's gaming team. your stuff hmm is this like some fight club thing What's going on in here uh, events over time But what is it? All right.
I don't know what this is. Confused. It's a gaming organization who fight and compete in tournaments like for rights. Okay. Cool. Thanks for that. Okay. Copies of our engine starter. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's just go to like the next step of like what you would do. Um, if you have a game that you found like Solus, I can do Solus. Solus would be a good example of it. Uh, virtual reality lands. So it looks pretty clean. Um, see here editor zoom team okay so here's the white paper and then you would go into the white paper if they had one um, so Christian has a crypto native background getting involved since 2016 Christian's experience here as well as retail investing side okay but what's your last name Christian Serena. These all seem like Anon names. You could just name like Christian. Solis CEO. Let's see if he comes up on LinkedIn. Led by three arrows. Christian Zhang. See if we can find him. Narrow down that search a little bit. Oops. Okay. I don't really know if I can find this dude. Christian Zhang. Can maybe go through LinkedIn profiles a little bit. All right, Chief Marketing Officer, Phantom Foundation. Okay, this seems like the dude. Okay, so native getting involved in 2016 let's see here LTO ah found him sniped him preview experience of Frampton LTO network in Solanium all right so CEO definitely has some blockchain experience internship February 2016 not very old. Nothing's wrong with that. He's like my age. That makes me feel great. Cool. All right. Let's see here. Skag smart contract platform solves the scalability issue. Of so I'm sure it's not block. Okay. 
chief marketing officer. I was at a market. LTO is a hybrid blockchain for securing, verifying, exchanging businesses, critical information. Okay, so for sure, like I would say that the CEO is pretty good. If it's being the same dude, which I think it is. Serena is an experienced business strategist with entrepreneurial background. She has closed over 750 million business contracts. Okay. Simon. Five years in VR development. He is the co-founder and co... Let's see how good they actually are. See if they can pull off uh, VR. Gosh, geez, CAPTCHA. It's a hockey jersey one. Give me a sec. Yes, for I would probably be impressed if I wasn't also in know of Neo's VR. <laughs> like Neo's VR just like completely destroys this. I don't know. So this is where I end, right? So a lot of people um, would probably like press on or like try to hold on to it, but I see the um, this game, Neo's VR, already working product, 10 times better than anything that else is going to come out. Um, or like, you know, a workspace. It's already a working product, and this VR is just so good. Very cool. It's just like really cool. Just amazing. If you don't know what Neos.com is or Neos VR, like by far the best VR project in the blockchain, but dare I say it, in VR as well. Just so freaking cool, man. Of course, now I'm going to get Oculus Rift uh, Amazon uh, ads for days now. Do you have background in gaming yourself or is this all pure research and a bunch of Elliot and Becker videos like me? <laughs> Um, so I, I, my background in gaming is just like playing a lot of video games when I was younger. Um, like, you know, I played a lot of video games. It was a very big part of my life growing up, but I got like, uh, got a family and stuff like that. So, um, ended up kind of taking on the back seat. And so what I do now is I just kind of research video games and I don't have like a, I have more of a technical research background, um, going over like, um, specific types of qualitative and quantitative like research so that's why I know like Tam and Sam and Som um, just to kind of give you uh, uh, a document of like what I kind of do or what I used to do in terms of like generating reports for stocks or like read like prospectus and all that kind of stuff so um, this is a uh, sheet that was uh, given to me by my mentor uh, but you know you go through qualitative management management boards you ask the good questions right so like these are all things that are like kind of going through my head um, and again, it's a lot harder to, to go through it um, and like step by step. But this is probably something that if you guys want me to kind of like go through like my thought process and how I kind of use this sheet. This is uh, Her Inventors. Um, he's amazing. Uh, one of a kind teacher. Um, very blessed to call him also as a friend. Uh, but like he's given me this sheet um, and um, 
you know, you, you kind of go through these questions, right? Like that CEO, right? Like, so what is the name of the CEO? Put him down. How long has the CEO has been in the company? He's just started. Uh, what did the CEO or do before joining the company? That's what I was just trying to do. It's like, okay, he understands blockchain. Great. Okay, what are the strengths of the CEO? Okay, he understands blockchain to a certain degree. Um, he's been part of that stuff. So he has connections with probably people back in 2016. So those guys are like OGs, right? Not as OG as the 2013 people, but yeah. Um, what are the weaknesses of the CEO? That's always huge, right? So the weakness of the CEO most likely will be gaming, right? That's why he hires this other guy that does it. And that's where the rubber meets the road. Like, okay, so the CEO looks like he's technically um, technical. Uh, the VR guy seems like good. Like he has a working product, but, and like, you know, it seems like relatively all right, but like there's Neos VR, which is, uh, it's not fair to them and not fair to you guys because I understand Neos VR. I've been studying it quite extensively i've done this process with them and it's just like they that that vr team like blows them out of the water and uh yeah so i think when it comes to vr and some of that technology in there it just becomes like really big right so uh how long does the cfo and so you talk about uh um the uh the financial officer and then you talk about the cto the cto is going to be really important in blockchain games and so i also make this kind of like my thing, right? And so like head of sales too, like what's the marketing department gonna be like? Is it going to, the management team is like the, the crux of like the whole argument. Like if you think that it's gonna be a little bit shaky, like for example, like um, the reason why I put out a D-race was mostly the management team. Like the management team like seems like they just piss off people all the time and that's just not a good measure for success. Did I lose out on a lot of money? Absolutely, but again, I am comfortable with taking my gains and putting it somewhere else and allocating it to a team um, that I feel a little bit more comfortable with, that they're just not going to wreck my bags the next day. Uh, company his history. Um, what year was like, uh, so this one is an example of like Apple. So like company history, this one, a lot of like blockchain games and stuff don't have company history. So what I do is I go past the other one, right? So one of the uh, um, big red flags for me for like crypto unicorns, for example, and this is still a risk, right? Was the company history before, like the, the two ones that uh, uh, would the two games or three games that they had like never really hit mainstream. So you have to be kind of careful. Like, okay, that was in a very cutthroat environment. Like, okay, in a blue ocean, are they able to kind of thrive and, and be found a lot easier, which I think they are. That's why I took the risk. And that's why I bought unicorns, uh, products and service, whether they offer like, you know, catalysts and drivers, like what is going to be these huge ones, especially if you're going to be swing trading these, right. Or like, you know, if you're going based off narrative narratives, it's like, okay, so Citus has like the IDO drop. It has like, you know, potential like Becker and Elio videos, uh, shilling them tomorrow. Like, those are catalysts and drivers that will boost that thing all the way up. Like secular, like cyclical, is this a secular one that's like, you know, it's gonna be here for a very long time. Like, you know, possibly like Neos VR could be secular, but it's like been trying to be secular for a very long time. Uh, cyclical in nature, like games already are automatically in a cyclical nature. So like when it comes to like um, the Take-Two Interactive or EA or, you know, Activision, the reason why like their Q3 and Q4 quarters are just out of the, out of the uh, water crazy out of the water, I don't know what that is, but like why they're so good is because like they timed like their, you know, World of Warcraft uh, expansions, all that stuff for Q3 and Q4 sales because it's the winter time, right? Um, next is like target market. This is the total adjustable market that SOM, that SAM that I just mentioned, which is like so important because you have like this, this massive market. And you have to know what that is to actually put a price on it. Like crypto, the one thing about it's crazy is that like no one ever talks about like the total adjustable market or what it is or like, you know, crypto in a whole, like, how much people are actually adopting crypto, which means that like, you know, that's the actual serviceable market and the service attainable market is what you can actually attain inside your like niche, right? So total addressable market could be gaming, but the service addressable market for VR is very, very little. Um, and just to show you how little it is, um, you can like go to this free version. I wanna download it. Oh, you suck. Come on, give it to me for free. I think I have it, give me a second. Hold a second. Okay, I do have it. All right, so talking about how small VR is. All right, so here we go.
is sorry I'm probably like making this stream super slow Trying to find a percentage chart for you guys. I could also just Google it. I don't know why I went through all this trouble. So sorry guys, let me just Google it. That'll probably be a lot faster. All right, so like the, the virtual reality, let's see, not TAM, let's do virtual reality. Um, okay, let's see how many own a VR headset. It's not gonna be much, and this is your total addressable market, right? So here we go, virtual reality market statistics predict that 58.9 million and 93.3 .3 million in the United States will use VR and AR respectively at least once a month this year. Once a month, that still means that like they're not using it daily, right? Uh, it accounts for a 17.7% and 28.1% of the total US population. Yeah, you can say that. I just, I think that they're framing that in a way that boosts up those numbers. Um, in, in the grand scheme of things though, we can say VR compound annual growth rate. Should probably put virtual reality. All right, so the global virtual reality market size was valued at US, uh, USD 15.81 billion in 2020, expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 18% from 2021 to 2028. So there's your like total adjustable market, right? So let's go with 15.81 billion, right? Extrapolated. Do we have a compound annual growth rate? Kager calculator calculator. That's misprint. Dang it. Live too, man. Google, you gotta do me dirty like that. Um, let's see. No, 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 no. Oh, gosh, jeez, no. No, not it either. Oh my gosh. Google's trolling me and I'm so upset. Okay, present value is 15.81 billion. Uh, future value, what do you mean future value? Oh, it's gonna tell you the compound annual growth rate. No, I know the compound annual growth rate. Standard cager. All right, I give up, guys. I'm so sorry. We could do it for <laughs> one more year. So that's in 2020. So let's just say times 0.18. Gosh, geez, man. Google is just wrecking me tonight. All right, so it's 2.8. Right now it's currently sitting at like an $18 billion valuation and then it, it compounds right over time. So like you're sitting at like what a 30, $30 billion revenue. Again, you're add crypto on there. You can add a multiplier. Great. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. But still like VRs and people actually owning it. Like if we go back to this Tam, Sam and Sam, right? This Tam, it's like $50 billion at most, right? Let's, let's say that we give them the benefit of the doubt. And like Sam, the service attainable market, that doesn't mean that you get like, okay, so let's say that Neo's VR or like uh, um, Solus, Solus, whatever it is, Solus is not taking that whole TAM. It's taking that specific niche of sandbox games. And within that sandbox game, there's gonna rise another competitor and then that's also going to be a smaller portion of it. So that 50 billion is really not 50 billion, right? It's really like 50 is like maybe 1 billion at, at most. That's like, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of the percentage of the complete 
Uh, somebody says here, I can't see VR taking off properly until they innovate beyond the brick on the face stage. Yeah, man. And I think like, yeah, Facebook has such, the, the one thing is like too, like with a lot, with a lot of these like uh, um, metaverse uh, type of ones that are incorporating VR, like who's, who's the ticket into VR right now? And it's currently Facebook, who's also your biggest competitor. So they can easily flip the switch and say, you know what? We don't support crypto video games, but you can use fiat inside of our metaverse. It's, yeah, it's not good. All right, Jim, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for all that you do. Thank you for smashing that like button. Man, I almost smiled. And... Here we go, here we go. Let's go into, what was I doing? Oh, do you guys want to keep on talking about the Google Sheet or the um, Excel Sheet? Kind of like my thought process on it. I could, you know. I'm doing it. All right. Uh, so target markets, that's why I like the TAM, SAM, and SOM are very important, right? Uh, competition, always important, right? Like Axie Infinity, no competition all the all the way, right? So they're just going to take so much market share. Now Crypto Unicorns is popping up, like Red Village is popping up. All these other games that are like fun, like Zed Run now has competition with uh, D-Race. And so this is really like nothing in the gaming market, right? Like all of these are like the first like early adoptions, like Gen, Gen 1, or you can even do Gen 0. Because a lot of these are just going to completely die off. But the innovation is stacking on top of each other, right? So all these ones are helping pave the way for the next, like, gaming generation and all that stuff. And crypto is, like, all of these are going to be the guinea pigs. You're like, oh, that one worked, that one worked, that one works. And you can see that with tokenomics as well, man. Like, one token, two tokens, three tokens, governance, all that kind of crap. And so it's just kind of crazy, all this stuff that's popping off. And so, like, we just have to be very careful and take take profits along the way, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, especially in a very, like unstable environment that we're currently in uh production and distribution so like how much are they going to produce right so if the company produces products comment on how the company produces the most important product they produce including manufacturing facilities uh whether manufacturing so that's something that's like to note right so i don't know if there's a good example of it there's a lot of like stuff for like hardware but like also software too right i don't know so there's not like a shortage of like software to download but like if like the chips, for example, let's say that they needed um, Gala nodes would be a good example, right? So you have Gala, and you need to be able to to make these like GPU like nodes or something. I don't know how Gala's technology works, but then you have to be able to make those. And if there's a chip shortage, that could affect the price. But no one's really thinking about that. But you get my point. Uh, supplies, components, like what do they need to actually um, make the game, right? So like. Everybody relies on like uh, Unity engine and stuff like that. But if there's like a big exploit on Unity and like clears like all the asset store, that's something that's like, I don't know, uh, a possible uh, um, derail of something. Uh, commodities exposures, R&D, intellectual property, like what makes them like, do they have a patent or something like that that causes a moat? Like for example, like this trackpad for the uh, MacBook, like no one can use this trackpad because it's patented by like Apple. So lawsuits you know that could be something for like tezos it's a huge risk right like a, uh for like they got uh, sued in the past um being a security i think i'm not too sure uh government regulation something that's huge in crypto right you guys have to understand like the macro scale of two like it when it comes to investing it's you can just go straight into like gaming right but like at the same time too is like you have to understand like the sec is coming for like some of it like what is the SEC thing doing? Like, what is the United States doing? What is China doing? What is this grand scale of the blockchain? Because it's international. A lot of things are going to happen, right? Like COVID, like happening in South Africa. When it comes to that, like it affected the stock market, right? Completely shut down, like planes, and airlines, went back, uh, many crash, and there's just like the cycle continues, right? Ethics, like something that's like for me, like that was something big for like the um, uh d-race team like i don't think they have the best morals and ethics and so are they going to do some shady stuff in the background something that i just watched from like elio is that like you know soul chicks is like something that like could possibly uh go wrong uh is that they're doing a lot of things behind the scenes that are a little bit sketchy right and within the gaming community within the crypto space it's completely the wild west like all of us get scammed all the time um so um This one I don't really fill out too much. I forgot what uh, Chris taught me to do with that one. Uh, customer service, like how's their customer service? Like, you know, who in like in terms of like their discords, like how good is their moderators? Are they like super helpful? Cause that builds a brand uh, that's gonna last. 
recruiting retention like who are they recruiting are they recruiting really good people like new hires like uh partners like what kind of partners are they going to be going with uh packaging barriers to entry barriers to entry is like huge and that's barriers to entry for the nft gaming space in a whole is freaking terrible crypto in a whole is terrible right so like you have an issue with uh the onboarding process everyone talking about like uh, solana and why they have drawn so much people to the solana network is because ethereum gas is too much and now there's just this constant battle um for it um everybody will claim that i'm an eth maxi uh in some sense i guess i am but like there is like a i think there is a fundamental um yeah that's not that's not for this sorry i won't go into that uh, somebody that that's that's a that's a conversation i have a lot with our discord members um but yeah there's uh, there's other things that we can go into but that's kind of like what's going into like my mind um to kind of just go into like a um a, a mental checklist and the more that you do the the better like the checklist gets right so like you go through like a game and you you go through uh, wonder hero and you pick up some things you're like oh i really like those tokenomics oh i wonder why these people didn't use this tokenomics well it's because this space is so early and this, this space is so young um so that's something big um again I, I would love to take questions if anybody has them uh i know you guys have been kind of talking to me so i'll kind of go through them um i pretty much did all of them okay Okay, but I'll hang out here. I'm just gonna um, do some stuff uh, for the Discord. I'm pretty sure I'm not showing my Discord, so it's all good. Yeah, I'll hang out for a bit. I'm just I'm here chilling, anyways. What's up, Ike? How you doing, brother? I am just chilling now. Um, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll get back to work. I want to I wanna figure out some more stuff about this, uh, this social media one. If you guys want to come along with me. This one just like really is really cool. Cheng Zhang. Sorry, I'm tilting my head. Uh, we spoke on Becker's comment earlier. Great, man. I'm excited that you're here. I don't know which one, man. I shill so much on Becker's posts. I'm surprised he hasn't blocked me, to be honest, because I, sometimes I push back against what he says. Um, and I, yeah, I, I went from like 20 followers to like 1,200 or 1,100. I forget where I'm at now. And uh, it was all shilling off of Becker's posts. Like if you go back in the history of mine, it's just me shilling on Becker's posts. I'm very appreciative of that, man. I have a lot of respect for him. Okay. Uh, where was it? It was called. No, 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 no. Dang it. We'll have to go back to Animoco. That's where I found him. Are you still holding on to your Citus NFTs? Uh, yes, but I did take some profit when it hit one ETH. I had to, man. Like, I'm sitting on like a 20x, 30x. It would be, uh, yeah, it's just, that's that's a lot of money. I gotta make sure that I take care of my family as well. Uh, but I still believe in it. Like, I still hold like, uh, I'd say like 80% of my Cytus Heroes. Uh, yeah, I have one also, like my Legendary, I have up for like 20 ETH. If you wanna buy that, <laughs> by all means, go for it. Um, I'm just kidding. Like, yeah, but I, I do have like some of my, um, uh, some of my side heroes like I have one rare and one legendary up for sale, but that's it after that. I'm like done um, Game is coming out and stuff like that. So it should be should be pretty cool Okay, link B. This is not it What I don't think this is the one that I was looking at goes under hashed yeah this is the one I want to know more about this one who's in charge of it all that stuff like it's not a game one 
but I want to know more about it. Hmm. Offline. Here we go. This guy is behind the magic, it seems like. Are you in Neo Tokyo? No, I am not in Neo Tokyo. I am not in Neo Tokyo. I am not the mole, even though there's like three or four of them. Ah, he's worked at Hashed. That's why. It means that he just done well in Hashed, you know, if they're going to invest in them. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, I am not. I, I will admit I tried. I very much tried. I was very close. I was in group two, and then I didn't know how to do the token ID. So for that, I learned something from Becker and Elio. I learned how to mint from contract on Ether, Etherscan, which is awesome. Uh, so this guy, this guy. Semiconductor design, okay. Co-founder at April Font. So this is also what I do, right? So like this is important to kind of go through like the qualitative checklist in my head, right? Like is this person able to do everything that they say that they're gonna state in this stuff, right? So like when it comes into the NFTs, and this is why I don't like the team being anonymous because it holds them no accountability to if they just rug pull, right? So like if Elio, like let's say that a super farm, like Elio was behind it, but he never uncovered himself. And it's like Super Farm like had like a terrible launch on like high rise, right? So I'll call it spade a spade. Like he had like really bad like a launch, like it crashed once or twice. And you know, you can't even mint with a ledger, which is like, come on. Um, and so when it comes to that, like you just have to like think that like if that went so terribly, like he could just leave with all of the, the valuations and uh, the money that we've uh, given him to like you know create super farm um, so I like when teams are docked 99% uh, of the investments that I, I go into are docked because you need to make sure uh, that you can at least hold them responsible and that there's gonna be some like type of legal binding if they come to hurt you and your money and your finance it's not worth it to me to invest into a team that's anonymous because they have all the power and you don't and there's a lot of trust there that needs to be happening especially if you're gonna be spending like like 0.1 ETH or 0.09 ETH, like these are thousands of dollars, right? They're not just, it's not like a, a bad thing. You're a group two also, man. Tier, man, for sure. Um, are you in it? I don't know, maybe you are in it. You're smarter than me. Uh, Co-founder and chief technical officer at Lockit, uh, head of engineering, Reco Ball, Hashed, founder and CEO of Off. Very cool, okay. So this is the team, huh? Very cool. Software, hardware engineer, eight plus years of experience. This guy. Oh, wait, dang, I need to figure out. Kenny, so co-founder, former. Former co-founder and COO at Hash. Dude, really? Bro, he was a co-founder? 
Dude, this guy's the real deal. OG full set. Bro, congratulations, man. Yeah. Have a good one, brother. Uh, Kenny, product lead. PM, UX, prototyper, dev researcher, investor, daydreamer. Runner, gamer, and introvert. Huh. Let's see his. I bet you all of these guys are going to be just straight stacked with talent. So they met at Hashed, cool. Sam's Electronics, Interaction Designer, C Lab, Service PM, CES Innovation Award, Interests. Okay. Very cool. Very talented man as well. See here. Dang it. So he's PM, is that personal management? User interface, prototyper, dev, researcher, and investor. Okay. So Dan is data lead. So Dan's scientist, developer, and trader. Senior associate. Oh, so these guys are just straight from hashed. <laughs> Dang. GW Tech sent season CTO. Let me guess. Okay, so here is somebody different. So Kai Inc. Don't know too much about it. South Korea, chief technical officer, project leader, and project manager. So let's look at Kai is. He's been there for a long time, computer software. Research and develop world-class in imaging technologies, patent and exec academically publish the top venues. Products. Multiple projection setup. So it makes it sharper. High quality VR. Dude, yeah, he was the CTO of all of this crap. That's impressive. He tasks. Oh, that's so cool. Are you kidding me? Advertisement like within like the the train, the windows. I don't even know if anybody's here to be honest in this YouTube. I just think that's freaking cool. Kai cast. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. And team is awesome. Okay. So Kai presents the next generation immersive media. This allows the creation of VR experiences in the simplest and the most powerful way our expertise in the area of computer graphics and vision brings this fascinating application to life. Kai is a spin-off company from the Visual Media Lab at Kai ST, which is one of the best science and technology universities in Korea. Currently 15 top class R&D team members are constantly unleashing new media technologies that will enhance visual experiences for viewers. Very cool. So it looks like he is uh, prepared to take on a new challenge within NFTs. Uh, Moana. 
حرف زنیم Understand that. Let's be a tryhard, though. You got to do it. Alumni program team manager Magellan. Screening and fostering of early startups. Alumni program and planting a and planning and branding, startup team design, support, and brand content. Okay, so she's gonna be in charge of branding this, I'm guessing, at Bluepoint Partners. the initiation of everyone who wants to focus and solve meaningful problems starts thinking about society and how to solve problems together okay cool okay so looks like she's gonna be in charge of video creator UI 3d modeling okay so this is, is this the only team is this it Pretty sure they said seeds there, one to ten people. All right. I think I am done though. Thanks y'all for watching. You guys are awesome. Appreciate you. Peace.